In this video, I'm gonna show you how I prototype websites fast so that I can get paid better and faster. Hello, I'm your host Casino from Casino.com. I'm the Digital Alchemist, and today I'm gonna show you how easy it is for anyone to prototype their own website without having any technical knowledge. Now, if you're selling websites for a living, it's gonna get even sweeter because I'm gonna show you how you can get paid faster and give your cash flow a treat. And by the way, if you're tired of reinventing the wheel for each website project and getting paid late in the process, make sure you watch until the end because I got a sneak peek to share with you. Now, a quick disclaimer. In this video, I'm going to talk about a tool that I built called Wire Mentor, but you are totally free to use anything you want as long as it allows you to prototype fast. So with that out of the way, let's move on. Now, have you ever wondered why some people sell websites for 500 bucks while others sell websites for 3k, 4k, 5k, 10k? Now, I love what Envato is doing in a lot of aspects, but if you want to build professional websites and if you think you're just going to buy a theme for a few bucks and then just slap the client's logo and colors and content and you think that's going to cut it for a high paid website, that's not really going to work. Well, it may work, but that's going to be a one off and that's not a strategy. If you want to get paid more for your work, you're going to have to step up your game and it's not that hard. There are a lot of great tutorials on the web, especially here on YouTube, but sometimes some of these tutorials lack one component, one essential component, the professional component. And by professional, what I mean is what agencies and professionals are actually doing to sell websites for a living. And even if you are alone building websites, don't be discouraged and bear with me because we just want to get inspired by what the industry is doing so that you can integrate it into your workflow. Professionals wireframe and prototype before crafting the final design. See, I have a series where I pick a random website on the web and then I'm just going to redesign it. So here I got some of the assets for the final website. Here I work on the identity. So this was the um, original logo and this is what I came up with. And basically in those series, I just show you the process. So one part of the process is to start wireframing. So this is a static wireframe and you can use pretty much any tool you want. You can use Adobe XD, you can use Figma, Sketch, whatever. I'm just using Affinity Designer because it's a great tool and I can do a lot of things with it and it's really cheap. So. Here's an example where I pick the homepage and I start redesigning it, but it's very bare bones, it's very minimal. So I create and use and reuse my assets and then I can just redimension anything I want. And basically I do that for the desktop version, then for the tablet version, and then for the mobile version. And then once I'm happy with it, I can start the design process, as you can see here. Now, it's great and I actually love doing it. I think it's really, really fun. But just bear in mind, this is just one page and it's not even a full page. So just imagine if you need to do this for each and every page on the website and then for each version. And then once you're done, this is still a static design. There's no prototype. So either you need to develop it yourself or pass it on to a developer that's how it works and it's great when you get the human resource and the time to do it but why reinventing the wheel especially if you're on your own my guess is that you don't have the time just to spend weeks working on prototypes and designs so most people just get a theme and like i said they slap the client's logo on it change the colors add the content and that's it but as we've seen that's not really an option if you want to get paid better now, another option is to get a theme builder so that you can start designing straight in the browser. And I've done it. You can totally do it. But you really need a lot of experience. And even with experience, it's not really the best way to do it. So to solve the problem, I built a tool called Wire Mentor to prototype really fast within the comfort of WordPress and Elementor Pro. And the best thing is that once your prototype is ready, you can just start transforming the prototype into its final design without having to recreate everything from scratch or from static wireframes. So let me show you. Let's imagine it's a really typical brief. The clients want to present the company. They want to show a few of the houses that they've built and they want people to contact them. So I've come up with this structure home about us then we have our homes with three examples then we have your projects and then contact so once i've installed wire mentor i usually work with two browser windows and i'm talking about browser windows and not tabs because i have many many tabs open in each window 
So this is going to be the first browser window with the back office of WordPress. And then this is going to be the front end where I see Wire Mentor. So basically Wire Mentor is a wireframing kit with some elements, as you can see here, some blocks and some layouts. So once I've identified what I want to use to create my wireframe, I can just start copying and pasting the elements with Elementor. Now, of course, it means that you need to know your tool, but it's just like with any tool. You need to know your tool and the more you use it, the more you're going to know where to find things. So basically, the elements are all the Elementor Pro widgets that are pre-styled. Then I have the blocks and then the layout. So let me show you. Here, for example, I have a block. So this block is a hero section, a boxed hero section, as you can see. Here I have some buttons, negative, positive, so I can just copy and paste it wherever I want. Here I have a list item that's pre-styled. Here I have a block with three banners, which I'm going to use for my project. And here I have another standard page layout. So basically what I can do if I want to use this one, I can just right click and copy. And then I'm going to go to my first window and I'm going to start pasting elements. So I've already pasted it here and I've pasted a few other elements. There are instructions on each page to make it easy for you. And of course, the whole thing is responsive. So here is the tablet version and here is the mobile version. OK, so let's look at the final wireframe version. And now let's look at the final result with the design. So here it is so once again and this one. So let's take a look. As you can see, I just added some movement here, but if we take a look, it's the same layout. And then I added something a bit different. Now, this is not part of Elementor Pro. I actually got this from Ultimate Add-ons for Elementor, but if you look at the wireframe, it just looks really similar. Now, at this stage, when you're building the wireframes, you don't want to start thinking about, okay, which widget I'm going to use. At this stage, you just focus on the structure. And then once everything is approved, you can start thinking about what you're going to use, the design and so on. And that's the result. Now let's take a look at the about us page. So this is what I came up with also with the same process. So I just went to pick the elements that I wanted. I already had actually a layout already done. So I just copied it. This is my layout and then the first block here is for the mobile version. So let's take a look at the final wireframe version and now let's take a look at the design version. So as you can see, it looks really clean. It's very simple, but it's the type of layout that I actually use for real life projects and that's why it made it to our mentor. Now let's take a look at the third page, which is our homes. And if you recall, these are the banners that I told you we were going to use. Let's take a look at the mobile version, the tablet version, and back to the desktop version. So let's take a look at the final wireframe version. Okay, and now let's take a look at the design version. Okay, much better. And as you can see, by changing the fonts, the colors, and really giving it an identity, you can make it look really professional and totally your own. Now, when we click on this banner, and by the way, I use the plugin to make the whole column clickable. And if you want to know how to do it, I got a tutorial video about that on the channel. But here in the wireframes, I didn't use that plugin. Like I said, I was just focusing on the structure. So here, I just have a button here and you can click on it. And here in the final design, like I said, it's the whole column that's clickable. So once you click on it, this is the wireframe version of what people are going to see. So we have a title, some text here, and then a gallery of four pictures and a picture in the background. So let's take a look at the final wireframe version. And now let's take a look at the final design. So once again, as you can see, it's clean, it's professional, and you can make it your own. You just need to play with the colors, with the fonts, just make it look clean. Now, the pictures help a lot. I mean, those are great houses in my opinion. Now the next page is exactly the same layout as the about us page. So here is the final version. And then we have the contact page. So once again, let's take a look at the responsive version. So as you can see, it looks really clean on the mobile. Let's take a look at the tablet mode. Okay, and let's go back to the desktop mode. So this is the final wireframe version. And this is the final design version. 
Now the whole wireframe prototype took me roughly 30-ish minutes to complete. It was really easy because most of the layouts were already there, but even when I need to mix and match various elements, I've rarely gone beyond two or three hours to build a prototype. And that's nothing compared to the two or three or four days that I used to take to create a prototype. And I'm not even talking about the large scale projects where it could take me weeks to complete a prototype and write all the documentation. And that's where War Mentor shines because if you already use Elementor Pro, then you already know most of these widgets. And I've added a few blocks and I've added some layouts and I keep adding some layouts. And the idea here going forward is that when I complete a real website project, if there's something new that I found really handy, I will add it to Wire Mentor. And the same goes for the tutorials that I create on this channel. So if you don't want to follow the whole tutorial and those tutorials are lengthy, then I would just add it to Wire Mentor and then you can just get it in a snap. And if you got ideas of what I should add to Wire Mentor, just reach out. And if it would be a good addition, I'll add it. Now the idea here is to give those wireframes a real identity. Fonts colors and you can really mix and match the elements here is literally the same but i could really move things around i could remove the button i could have two columns i could add a second row sky is the limit and even if you're not going to use a tool like War mentor even if you want to use traditional tools the same is true you need to really give some identity and by the way this is one of the key foundations of web design now in the intro i told you that i could get paid better and faster well, better because of course the client's going to know if you're not using a theme. Now, I know that most clients, they don't really know about that and they don't really care because they just want the website to look good. But people are getting more literate and more and more they know when you use the theme. So if you're going to use the theme and just slap their logo on it, they won't be ready to pay that premium. So they're going to be okay if they pay a very little amount. But if you want to get paid higher, you need to show them that you stepped up your game and wireframing is one of the way to achieve it because it's just the beginning of the process and then you're going to craft a really custom design. But why did I talk about getting paid faster? Well, that's really simple. Before I used to ask 50% upfront and then get 50% when the website is released. But now with this new workflow, I still get 50% upfront. But then when I release the prototype demo, I asked 30% before I started the design. So at this stage, I've been paid 80% of the total amount before I start designing. And at each phase, I don't move on to the next phase until I've been paid. So as you can imagine, it gives a lot of motivation and also it's really easy for me and for the client because we all know what's going to happen next. And also one of the advantages is that starting the design after the wireframe and the prototype has been approved makes it much more easier and there's much less back and forth with the client. Now, this is version two of Wire Mentor, which is not released yet unless you're watching this from the future. So as promised, here is the sneak peek. And the first thing is that if you go to site settings, global you can now change and everything is going to change in one place so let me show you i'm just going to pick this color and as you can see it's reflected here let me pick this one here let me select some green some ugly green and as you can see it's reflected here so let's take a look and as you can see everything is now working smoothly now, I know this already exists in Elementor Pro for a long time. And actually, Wire Mentor is just a wireframing kit based on Elementor Pro, as you've probably understood by now. But the issue is when uh, Elementor Pro initially released this feature, I tried to implement it in the first version of Wire Mentor, but it didn't work. And even outside of Wire Mentor, just anyone trying to upgrade their website from version two to version three of Elementor Pro and trying the new global settings. Well, for many people, not everyone, but for many people, it didn't work as smoothly as it should have. So there was a migrator, but yada, 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 a lot of issues. So I had no idea, basically I had to start everything from scratch again. And as you can imagine, it took a lot of time. So I did it for version two and I did not come empty ended because here are a few of the new elements. So first of all, we have the PayPal button. I created a few variations with the positive and negative versions. Next, we have the text path widget, which at the moment of recording this video is one of the latest addition to Elementor Pro. So I pre-styled the widget with the various options and I also have the negative version as you can see here. Next, we have a new block. It is the archive two block that we saw earlier on. Next, I added a couple of footers. Actually, it's the same footers that we had before, but with a little surprise. And that surprise is the back to top button because I thought it could be really handy in your prototype. 
Next, I added a new transparent header. So let me show you, it's number seven here. As you can see, it's the same header that I used here on this website. And I thought it could be handy to have the transparent version. So it uses a negative margin to just shift the content up. Next, we have a new hero section. It's quite a complex section, as you can see here, because I have two blocks on the side, one on the top, one at the bottom, and then the main block here on the right hand side. I can't wait to show you in a future video what you can build with this. Next, we have another hero block, and that's the one we saw earlier on in this video. And next, we have a new contact page, and here is the same version, but this time boxed. Next, we have a new homepage layout with the hero section that we saw just a few moments ago, but with more blocks here on the page. And our next new layout is a homepage layout and is the one that you saw earlier on in the video that I used when I showed you the example with the final design. It's this one, if you wanna see, with the final design. Next, we have another layout with the three banners that we saw earlier on, and I call this layout intermediary page. Next, we have a new gallery layout, and it's also the one we used in the example before. You can use it as a simple gallery, and in that case, you may want to remove the text and the button, or you may want to use it as a project showcase like I did earlier on. Next, we have a new standard page layout, the standard page number five, and once again, is the one I used earlier on, so it's a box layout. Next, I updated the services layout, so let me show you if I click here. As you can see, I added a back to top button to make it really handy to go back to top really fast. Next, we have the vertical nav. Now, it's not really new, but I just realized that I never really talked about the fact that I released that in the previous version. So as you can see, you can just open and close the vertical navigation. It's also one of my popular tutorials, so I thought, yeah, you should make it to Wire Mentor. So if you're interested in prototyping faster and potentially getting paid better and faster, just go to casina.com forward slash wire mentor and I'll see you on the other side. Now, if you enjoyed this video and want to support the channel, please give it a thumbs up as it really, really helps growing the channel. And if you want more videos about web design, make sure you subscribe and smash the notification bell so that you don't miss anything. And if you're serious about building professional websites, you may want to watch one of the videos appearing on screen right now. So I'll see you in the next one. And until then, take care and stay safe.